If you are new to rendering in a 3D application or if you just need a refresher in shading in general, today I will be showing you the basic principles of a 3D shader and how you can create any material with that. These techniques can be applied to any uber shader like standard surface shader, like the Pixar surface shader or the V-Ray materials. Most of them have the same attributes so you can apply everything the same way. Before we jump into this video, my channel needs your help to get to the next level and if you haven't done so, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have ideas for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comment below. In stage 3, I will talk about shading setups and how to layer different materials, as this is kind of a complex topic, so I'll try to be very specific and very detailed on how I approach things. First of all, it's very important to talk about the shader itself, and it consists of several different shading lobes. It starts with base, then specular transmission, subsurface lobes, coat, sheen, emission, thin film, and these are all the ones you can apply to the AI standard surface model. Very important are base and specular. These are the settings you will use most of the time. My default shader is a neutral gray, which consists of a diffuse albedo of 0.18, which is perceived as a neutral gray to the eye. And with, if you have this, this setup, your resulting color with your correct light setup should re reflect roughly the same amount of light, which is uh, 0.18, and the numbers below should kind of um, display that we are in that ballpark. This is very important, and this is how I set up my shaders all the time. So how does this essentially work? So you obviously have your base material. Let's say this is my shading sphere here. And the base is essentially at the lowest level. And on top of that, you will add your specular lobe, um, which goes on top of the base. And this is essentially how reflective your material is, how shiny is it, um, glossy like a mirror ball, or if it's more rough. And this is what you specify in the specular tab. Transmission is the light penetrating the object and passing through it like you would see um, for glass or water where the, the material is actually very transparent and the ray goes through it, bounces around and then goes out the other side. This is called transmission. What is also called transmission, but in this case it's subsurface scattering, is when the ray goes into the surface into it, bounces around all the time, and then goes out again. So this is called a subsurface effect, and this is roughly seen in very gel-like materials. You see that in human skin and all sorts of things like that. And then the coating essentially goes on top of everything again. So you, I showed previously you have a diffuse, then you've got specular, and then on top of everything you can add a clear coat layer, which is mainly seen in car paint materials, or obviously things which have been coated with a clear gloss. Then you have sheen, which is essentially a lobe which fakes very fine fiber on your surfaces, as you would see in cloth, in jeans material, in satin, or even in peach fuzz for human skin. You can see there's some kind of very thin, whitish kind of fur, which is represented as sheen, which it can it has different use cases. And obviously emission is um, light being reflected. So if I bring up emission, you will see everything starts glowing and it will emit light. Sheen, as I said, is giving us the sheen on the edges of the surface. And you can see that our Ganesha here looks um, like cloth, like you want to touch it and it feels very soft, velvety-like. You can obviously change the colors for that. So now it's more like a red material, which is also very velvety. And as I said, the code goes on top, which makes it very reflective. Subsurface scattering will let you uh, would will let uh, light pass through. Let's go for skin one, and you will see that once it's resolved, you will see that it is translucent and it's pretty cool and very fast to set up. And then obviously transmission would be glass. As I said, if if you set it up right, you will get a very reflective, transparent glass object. And these are the basic materials you can set up. And obviously, if you have your base color, this will look um, like a plastic, for instance. So this is obviously glass, looking pretty nice. And if I disable transmission and I bring back um, my base, it, it is our gray material. Let's disable the code. And now we just have the spec. Obviously, spec off will give you a diffuse material. 
So a quick thing you want to do, let's say you want to set up a plastic, you go, okay, our plastic is kind of a red tone, increase the value, maybe go more saturation, and then you have the very basic plastic material. This is the very basic, very simple thing. And again, you can do all sorts. You can do like a rough plastic like this, very rough looking. And then you can decide, oh, I want it to be actually coated. Like let's say there's a clear coat glossing on top and you do that. So now we have two specular lobes. One is the re regular specular, and then you have your coating on top, which makes us look uh, like that. So now I want to kind of replicate the typical golden statue look of the Ganesha, right? So what you want to do, um, it is a me metallic material. So let's crank up metalness to one. And you can see with our red material, it looks uh, very red metallic. But we want to pick some kind of gold color scheme, something like that. Maybe go a little bit more yellow and maybe a little bit brighter. And you can see that we have a rough base looking gold material. What makes this work is you need to break it up with different materials, right? So on the standard surface here, all these uh, attributes we changed, they all have input slots for their materials. And let's say I want to add some kind of normal map. I can go AI normal, which um, opens me up the node AI normal map. I can plug in my color to input and the out value would go to my um, normal camera. And this will add very fine details to certain parts of your character. And then we have different kind of materials. We have different bump maps. We can use this cavity map. Let's see how that looks like. So first of all, let's create a range node, which I always use because that enables me to control my input maps quite easily. So let's connect this. Let's say I want to drive the roughness specular out, uh, specular roughness like that. And you can now see something happened and we've got these clear areas. And this is essentially what the cavity map does. So if I go on isolate selected, you will see that this is my cavity map. In the AI range, what I can do, I can play around with those values. I don't want them to be super bright here. So I can just say my output max, my maximum value, which the range outputs is now, let's say 0.2. And the result of that will look now completely different. And if I just render this little region at the bottom, you can then say, oh, okay, I want it to be a little bit rough, but the kneecaps essentially should be very shiny. And this is now what this is doing. And if you now add more and more and more nodes to this, let's say we want to add a um, procedural noise pattern. Let's say we want to use AI cell noise instead. And what I want to do, I want to multiply those two maps together. So I'm creating an AI multiply node, hooking those two things up like that. And then the out color, I'm just picking red because red is a grayscale value. And this will, and this is needed for the specular roughness. If I visualize the cell noise, this is what it looks like. Let's switch this to Woily and we need to increase our size, maybe go on 0.1 and you get now larger specs of these circles. If I look at my multiply, you will see we get these dots. If I check the result, you will see that our character now has these dots all over her body, um, which is obviously a style choice if you want to do that or not. And then again, you can do all sorts of more fun things. You can, for instance, um, create a different material, right? So let's say I want to create a new AI standard surface like that. And as I said before, let's just create some kind of um, plastic. So quite easily, you can just go maybe red. Um, let's say, say this one and we want to reduce the roughness. So it's very reflective. And what you can do now quite easily, you can just use an AI mix which allows you to mix two different materials together. So I can just use the out color of the one, plug it in shader one, the out color of the other one in shader two, and make sure you connect these to your original shading engine like that. And now you have a kind of a blend. The default is 50-50. And you can obviously drive the mix with any kind of map. So if I use the typical, let's say the AI checkerboard and hook just a luminance value. So let's just pick red because that is quite easy to uh, reach. You can now see that we have a split material. You can change your frequency, go to 10. And you can see now we have a nice pattern and we have our plastics and we have our gold multiplied and we have two materials in one. And let's go down to my standard surface two, which is the um, the cloth. So quite easily, as I said before, let's let's say we want to create a satin cloth. All I got to do is pick my color. Let's say I want to have it um, like a very bright green. Switch over to green tones. Maybe go a little bit more in saturation. Maybe bump the value up. So that is our now currently looking like a plastic. So I want to have very rough uh, material like that, and then I want to go 
all the way down to sheen and introduce that. And now just by doing that, you will see that the cloth has some kind of um, white sheen to it. Obviously, we want to pick some kind of green tone as well. And we would probably want to make it a little bit more bright and less saturated to kind of get the feel of something very cloth-like. And this is just a basic introduction on how to set up shaders, how I work with them, and what makes sense in general. Things I need to quickly touch up on is um, settings which I use, which gives my materials a more realistic look. So for one, everything in your surroundings is always fully 100% specular. Everything is reflecting. The only thing which makes things look dull or rough or like dry looking is the micro displacement. So a very clean surface, let's say a mirror, it's clean like that. The light will hit it and it will bounce right back off like that. It's a very clean render and you will not have any brightness, very shiny. So now let's compare this to, let's say a paper or wood or something rough like cloth. The surface is not perfectly round like this. The surface on a microscopic level looks something like this for cloth, right? It's very broken up. So if the light hits it, let's say use a different color. If the light comes in and it hits the surface, it will bounce here, it will bounce back, it will go maybe over here, and then it will go back out. And this makes your surfaces look very rough and dry looking. And wood is similar. Wood, for instance, has these, these cracks and they are very like broken up like that. And the light will come in and it will bounce off, bang, 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 and then go out. And you will not get a clean result. And this is modeled with... Um, like this effect I just talked about, the bouncing, is with this roughness. And the roughness is essentially the microscopic breakup of the surface. So if you want to have a dry looking material, you should never touch the specular weight. Leave that at one and drive it with the roughness. So the rougher you go, the less um, specular response will go, come back to the camera. And this is very important. And the same applies for, for weight and all these other things. So just keep that in mind. So if I set up basic materials, I always only play with roughness. Or if I don't even want to touch roughness, you, you should use uh, bump maps or displacement maps. Let me know in the comments below which of my tips helped you the most. And don't forget to like this video. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel. I would like to see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.